are Bria White. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I want to talk about levels of physical affection. Okay, so this is pretty much in a dating relationship. So we don't really talk about this in the church, but I really wanted to talk about it because a lot of times we need it and find ourselves in sin because no one talked about it. First and foremost, in your dating relationships or your courtship, you should be trying to please God. God should be first. And if you know the word of God, you know that fornication is a sin. Not because God wants to be this big, bad, evil God or he doesn't want us to have any fun, but because he understands it affects us emotionally, spiritually, and so in so many other ways. Okay? And so we should be wanting to please God. And it talks about in Ephesians 5, uh, down in the scripture, where he talks about the different sins. But fornication, meaning two unmarried people having sex, is in there where it talks about how it, they won't inherit the kingdom of God, how it's not godly. And it's not going to help your relationship. It actually confuses things. And so this is why I want to talk about the physical levels of affection. Because sometimes no one talks to us about it and we go too far and we find ourselves in sin, regretting it or just so caught up in it that you don't even regret it because you're just caught up in it. It feels good. You like it. You're like, what's the big deal? It's not sin to me. So I want to talk about it. So first and foremost, in my other videos, when I'm talking about dating with intention and I talk about um, seeking God first, keeping God at the beginning of your relationship so that you could see any warning signs. If you're going too far, meaning you're sinning, you're not hearing God clearly. So let's just talk about it. It's very important to set that sexual boundary ahead of time in your relationship. So if they know you're not having sex till marriage, you could see what level they're on. Yes, sometimes the man will lie and still try to persuade you or pressure you to have sex later. He might just lie up front so that he could still date you to say, yeah, I respect that or I believe the same thing. Or he may actually believe the same thing but finds himself in the heat of the moment tempted. Or you might find yourself in the heat of the moment tempted. Because the word tells us the spirit is willing but the flesh is weak. So you can't tempt yourself. We're human. We do have emotions and hormones. And if you're attracted to somebody, especially loving them, yes, your hormones may want to have sex with them or your emotions might tell you, yes, it's time. Okay, or you might feel sexually aroused. Yes, that's part of life. But that's why you have to set up boundaries for yourself and for that person so that you don't fall. So again, if you know you can't handle it, you need to just stop where you are. Meaning if your physical affection level is just hugging and cuddling, then you need to stop there. When it goes further, you need to get up and go or just stop and say, hey, let's stop. So first of all, let's talk about the physical levels of affection. Number one is holding hands, all right? Number two is going to be putting your arms around each other. Number three is hugging or cuddling, meaning you're up on each other a little bit more and maybe you're watching a movie or whatever. Um, that's number three. Number four is going to be kissing. All right, so number five is touching above the waist. Number six, touching below the waist, all right? Touching above the waist is the chest or the breast. Um, maybe you're kissing, maybe they're massaging it, but let me just keep it real. In my opinion, once you get past kissing, it goes downhill from there. Once you start, somebody start touching on your breast, you licking on them and all that stuff, you're getting sexually aroused and it's telling your brain to get ready for the next process, which is sex. Even kissing, um, it is even proven that once you get past a short kiss, meaning a peck, you start going into a long kiss using tongue, the hands start roaming, your hormones get raging. It actually tells the brain that the next step is sex. It's getting your body ready chemically. And I did not know that that's so crazy, but it's such a powerful thing. God made sex for procreation and recreation, but within a marriage, and it's a beautiful thing. But if we do it before the time, we complicate things, we bring sin into our lives, we separate ourselves from God, and there's a whole lot of confusion and chaos and heartbreak that comes along with that, okay? So again, number six is touching below the waist, which obviously is the vaginal area or the genital area on the male, the penis or the vagina. I'm just gonna keep it real and be honest because we don't talk about this stuff and we need to talk about it. Um, when they're starting to touch it, or somebody's starting to finger you or you starting to touch them or they're you know you're both are masturbating or you're jacking him up whatever and I'm using some slang terms but the truth is when you're at that point you're already in sin okay this is already sexual activity outside of a marriage some people say oh I don't take all that girl oh yes they do because you can't tell me that you ain't doing that and then you want to go further come on let's just keep it real you might do that for so long and after a while you might start masturbating yourself so you don't want to bring perversion into your life uncleanness impurity because how are you going to be focusing on God and in sin and hearing his voice for your life fulfilling your purpose that he has for your life and living in sin it's confusion been there done that it brings confusion and it brings so much sin and so many other things to your life where you can't hear God clearly and then obviously number seven is sexual activity whether that's oral sex anal sex vaginal sex it's all sex 
okay so you can say oh i'm still living for you god i'm still living in purity we just have oral sex uh it's called oral sex it's still sex so don't lie to yourself you got to be real that's the first um thing that you got to be and and a lot of times we lie to ourselves like it's cool god's cool with this or he know my struggle things are a process but if you don't set yourself up for success you're probably going to fail eventually like you know you shouldn't spend a night over that guy's house if you know you're trying to not have sex maybe one time two times three times you're okay but eventually you're going to be tempted what is the point of tempting yourself if you say you really want to live for god then you really should put things into place even an accountability partner that knows hey i'm hanging out with my friend tonight my guy friend call me at this time make sure i'm at home or on my way home those types of things when you're really serious about your relationship with god you're going to take serious actions in protecting that relationship with God and protecting your purity. And some of y'all just don't even care about this. You're just like, what's the big deal? I don't care. And that's fine. You're not there yet. But if you say that you're living for God and that you're a Christian, you need to ask God to give you a heart to care because his word is our roadmap for life. And his word is going to teach us how to please him, how to have a relationship with him. So if you're in a relationship with God, but you don't read his directions of how to be in that relationship, then you're fooling yourself. You're really not living for him. You're really not living for him. So this is no judgment. Been there, done that. But that doesn't mean we stay there. We have to learn and we have to do better and we have to grow. And so this was just a quick video that I wanted to do to kind of just go through some of the physical levels of affection. But just to say, where is your, your limit? You need to know that first and foremost. And if your limit's further than what the word of God says it should be, he doesn't necessarily specify about kisses or cuddling and all that. You let the Holy Spirit lead you. But he specifies about sex. And so we have to be real with ourselves and say, Lord, I'm in a sinful manner. or I'm struggling with this. I'm struggling with having sex outside of marriage. I struggle with purity in my relationships. I don't know how to do this. Be honest with him, but also set up parameters and boundaries for yourself and be real with that person that you're dating or courting. If they're not on the same level of trying to please God, then they're not ready. And that's fine. But you have to have enough self-discipline to say, you're not ready. I'm not ready. We're going to have to stop. Here's the level. Okay. So again, I love you ladies. I hope this has helped you give it a thumbs up if it has subscribe below so that you don't miss any videos go ahead to sharpria.com to read some of my blogs and go to single and satisfied movement.com to join the movement join our single and satisfied private group on facebook talk to you ladies soon i hope this helped bye love you